Neanderthals were archaic non-sapien hominid that inhabited areas of Europe and Western Asia in the Upper Paleolithic until their eventual extinction around 40,000 years ago. No modern human groups besides Europeans and West Asians carry Neanderthal DNA. However, Neanderthal DNA itself paradoxically resembles sub-Saharan Africans and not Europeans. With QP admixtures stats, we can see that various Neanderthals are closer related to sub-Saharan Africans who don't have Neanderthal admixture than Europeans and West Asians who actually do have Neanderthal admixture. I think this phenomenon is very comparable to Syntashta. Genetically, Syntashta is closer to North Europeans who don't have any Syntashta ancestry than they are to North Indians who actually do have Syntashta admixture. This phenomenon can be observed not only on Kpatum, but also with PCA base calculators such as G25 or even my own calculator that is embedded in Trade Predictor. For this video, I prepared six Neanderthal genomes and ran them through my Trade Predictor tool for DNA analysis. The most common predicted phenotype was Ethiopid, but Bantuid, Canarid, and even Mediterranean phenotypes were also present. Every sample had brown eyes, but four of them had dark brown and two had brown eye color. Every sample had black hair. Every sample, but one had dark brown skin color prediction. Four of the six samples received a kinky hair texture prediction, while one received a straight hair prediction. Half of the samples were predicted to have snub noses and the other half Greek noses. Regarding height, it seems that all of them were roughly close to average in height. Most samples had average odds of male pattern baldness, but one sample had low odds for it. Every sample had average odds of kidney stones and low odds of hemoglobin E disease. Two samples had low odds of migraine. Every sample had average odds of lupus. Three samples had low odds of gout, and three samples had low odds of eczema. Every sample that had sufficient data was predicted to have average odds of PCOS. Most had average odds of cataracts, and most were predicted to have low odds of age-related macular degeneration. One sample had low odds of Tourette's, and one sample had very high odds of epilepsy. Almost every sample that had sufficient data scored average for odds of asthma, vitiligo, and myopia. Every sample scored average for odds of corneal astigmatism, and two samples scored high for odds of primary biliary cirrhosis. Two of the samples were predicted to be warriors while one was predicted to be a warrior, which suggests that the COMT, MAOA, and MAOB mutations implicated an increased or decreased rate of dopamine reuptake have been around before the Neanderthals and Sapiens split from each other. Every sample scored more D2 receptor sites, which increases the odds of schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. Most of the Neanderthals scored average for odds of ADHD, low for odds of depression, an average for odds of bipolar one. The Neanderthals had a slight predisposition to autism with three samples scoring high and one sample scoring low odds of autism. The Neanderthals also had a predisposition to higher empathy levels. Regarding athleticism, it seems the Neanderthals were very athletic. Three of the Neanderthal samples had a genotype for ACTN3's R577X, and all three carried the athletic sprinter genotype. Regarding cardiovascular health, it seems the Neanderthals had an average overall predisposition to ischemic stroke, atrial fibrillation, deep vein thrombosis, and high predisposition to a wide range of cardiovascular issues. Neanderthals varied regarding their predisposition to type 2 diabetes and Alzheimer's, with some samples showing a high and some samples showing a low predisposition. The Neanderthals were strongly predisposed to various epithelial cancers based on their 8Q24 genotypes. Virtually all Neanderthals scored low for odds of breast cancer. One sample scored low for odds of glioma. Two scored low for thyroid cancer. And every sample that had a genotype in Kittle's key SNPS for testicular cancer prediction had a protective genotype. In this regard, the Neanderthals strongly resemble African populations. Every sample that had a genotype for JK2 scored low odds for polycythemia vera risk, and all samples scored average for risk of leukemia. Three samples scored low for odds of allergies, and every sample carried risk variants for rare conditions, the most numerous conditions being Parkinson's, congenital insensitivity to pain, myosclerosis, and familiar hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. 
The Neanderthals showed a low predisposition to autoimmune disease based on HLA genotypes. But surprisingly, one of them actually carried HLA DRB1 risk variants for multiple sclerosis. In this regard, this particular Neanderthal was somewhat alike Europeans, as this pathogenic mutation is also frequent in modern Northern Europeans. Every Neanderthal scored average odds of obesity, and they mostly had average predisposition to syncope. Surprisingly, the Neanderthals had lower LDL cholesterol levels overall, which is good, shorter telomere lengths, which is bad, and lower iron levels. Regarding blood types, the most common blood type was A, which three samples scored, followed by B, which two samples scored, and lastly followed by O, which one sample scored. What do you think of Neanderthals? Would you consider them human and grant them human rights if they live today? Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and also make sure to check out the links in description.